God if you're able. If you got it, say, I got it. Amen. Amen. And the word of God begins to read. But we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that have wrought us through, wrought us from the very same thing is God, who also have given unto us the earnestness of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent we may be accepted, we may be absent, rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he have done whether it be good or whether it be bad amen. you may be seated in the presence of the lord amen, amen. <clears throat> today i want to talk about some things that we all in here need to know paul said that if this earthly house if this body was dissolved, we have a building of God. We have something that was not made by the hands of man, but it is fashioned by God. And if it's made by God, then it's eternal. That means that it does not die, it does not decay, it does not grow old, it does not rust, it lasts forever. It does not have to reproduce because it lasts for eternity. And we need to know stuff just like that. There are some things that we need to know about life itself, but my subject today is going to be a real strange one. And the reason I call it strange is because some people don't like to hear you preach about it. Some people don't like to hear you preach on this subject. But again, I think one time I was there, I said, but if I decide to preach about prosperity, about living large, about having big houses and big cars, and large bank accounts, I'd get a whole bunch of amens. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, that's right. But if I start to talk about death, yeah. I get silence. Yeah. You see, not many folks going to say amen when you start to preach about death. Because everybody want to go to heaven. Y'all know the saying, but don't nobody want to die. die. <laughs> you see, nobody wants to talk about dying come on, come on. because they fear death. Yeah. And some of us don't even think about death because we believe that tomorrow is ours. Yeah. That's why we live any kind of way today. Jeez, yeah. Jeez, yeah. Jeez, you see, well, we fear death. Because death introduced us to the unknown. Yeah. And man is afraid of the unknown. Yeah. You see, he's afraid of what he don't know much about. 
You see, and we don't know much about the other side. We know a whole lot about what's on this side. You see, and another reason why we fear death is because death separates us. Yeah, death separates us from our loved ones. Yeah. Death separates us from life itself. And another reason why we feel death is because death comes without invitation. Yeah. Yeah. You can be sitting in the coffee shop drinking coffee and death can intrude. Mm -hmm. It'll step in and invite its own self. You see, you can be riding down the street minding your own business and death can intrude. You can be in the bank cashing a check and death can walk right in. Yeah. You see, you can be in the best of health, exercising at the gym every day, got all the trainers in the world and doing everything you think to live right, eating right, not smoking, not drinking, not doing all those things that take people out real quick and death can intrude. You see, death never knocks at the door and say, may I come in? It never gives you an appointed time when it's going to come. He just show up. Yeah. You see, it comes without an invitation. But it has a reservation with all men yes, sir. and all women, yeah. all children. Yeah. It has a reservation. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see, another reason why we don't like death and you need to know this, is because death mess up our plans. Yeah. You see, we plan to do this, and we plan to do that, but then death comes in and mess up our plans. You see, situations and circumstances will arise in life that will alter the course of your life for the rest of your life. Certain things will come up and will change your life forever. Yeah. You see, and death is certainly one of those things. Yeah. Let me get to the part of this. We all might be asking, or we might be wondering, or we might have thought that Grandma Nola would live on and on and on and on. She got to 101. She don't seem like she's slowing down. She seemed like she just keep getting year after year after year after year. It was because she was obedient. Yeah. And you might be asking yourself the question, how do I handle Grandma Nola's death? And I want to bless you with understanding this morning. You have to understand, my friend, that dying is a part of living. Yes, yeah. sir. The day you was born, yeah. you started heading to the graveyard. Yeah. And the funny thing is that we all know that this course of action is what we all must take. Yeah. But we have to understand that death is a reality for us all. Yeah. That every single person in here will travel the same course as Grandma Noah. But even though you're going to travel that course, I think it's all about how you travel it. Come on, come on, help us. Because you're going to travel. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not something, this course is not something that's made up uh, by religious folks in order to scare you into living right. Because in one manner or another, everyone will have an encounter with death. Psalms 89 and 48 says, What is man? What man is he that liveth? All shall not see death. Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? He can't do it. You see, death can't be escaped. You see, even Hussein Bolt with his world-class speed cannot outrun death. Even with his Olympic class speed, he cannot outrun death because death will eventually catch up with him. You see, death is that one that intertwines and intertwines itself with human activities somewhere in every human being's life. Even in the life of Jesus Christ, death came. Yeah. 
You see, one of the greatest rivals that man have and man and his kind has is death. All right. So while you running, the only thing that matters is how well you run. Right. <laughs> the only thing that matters in his race is how well you run. Some folks act like they ain't going to participate, but you're running. Some folks act like I ain't got nothing to do with that, but you got something to do with it. Some folks boat done sunk and it ain't even left the dock, but you're still on the water and you got something to do with it. Death will pay every person a visit. But it does not matter that death pays you a visit. It matters how you run your race. You see, it's not how fast you run. It's not how long you run. We thank God for the 101 years, but it's not how fast and how long you run. But it's how well you run. Because death is a reality and death is no respecter of any person. He does not care who you are. You see, death will visit the black man, he will visit the white man, he will visit the oriental, he will visit the Hispanic, he will visit the Asian, did I cover everybody? He will visit all man and his kind. He does not care. He respects no person. It will visit the rich, it will visit the poor, it will visit the educated as well as the uneducated. It will visit the religious as well as the non-religious. Death will visit the Christian as well as the non-Christian. It will visit all men and his kind. You see, the truth is, this race we call life, and all things in it, got its place. And the day of your birth, and the day of your death, has its place. In fact, it's an appointment we can't reset. It's an appointment we can't cancel. Now you can call your doctor. And you can reset that appointment with him. Yeah. You can call a whole bunch of places and reset and reschedule the meeting and the appointments, but this is one particular appointment that no man can escape, no man can reset, no man can cancel, and no man can compromise with. You can build a space station out of space, but you won't run from death. You can build a city in the water and underground, but you will not escape death. Yeah. I want to teach and preach some reality to you today. Yeah. And we must learn from the life of Grandma Nola on how to live our lives before we have the intrusive rivalry called death yeah. to come into our existence and turn it into what we like to call a non-existence. You see, the day of your birth and the day of your death has its place, and it has its place in all of our races. And in fact, it's an appointment again that I tell you that you cannot, you will not reset no matter what you do. And on July the 22nd of 1918, 101 years ago, Nola was born, and that was her birthday. <coughs> and that was her birthday. And on August the 28th of 2019, she transitioned from this race that we call life. But the truth is, the day that she was born and the day that she passed does not matter. Just as the day you were born and the day that you passed does not matter. On the other side of eternity, it has no significance when you was born and when you die. But what does matter is what you do in between the day you was born and the day you pass. Some folks got it twisted. You need to know that on July the 22nd, 1918, and August the 28th of 2019, what really mattered to Nola is her life, how she lived it. Her life was in between her birthday and her death date. That is what really matters when it comes to how you live your life. 
You see, so for the space of 101 years, God blessed each and every one of us with Nola's presence. He blessed us with a laughter. He blessed us with a smile. He blessed us with some discipline, some correction. He blessed us with that authoritarian fist that she had. He blessed us with wisdom. He blessed us with counsel. He blessed us with love. He blessed us with kindness. He blessed us with gentleness. He blessed us with meekness. He blessed us with self-control. He blessed us with Grandma Nola. All packaged up in one. Yeah. And that was a life in between them two dates. And she could cook. Don't let me leave that out. She could cook. And we are gifted with a love which touched every single person in him in one way or the other. Because the reason I know that he touched you is because you're here today. Yeah. You see, my brothers and my sisters, it doesn't matter about your birthday. I'm sorry to tell you that. It don't matter about the day you die. I'm sorry to inform you of that. But it matters how you live your life in between them two dates. The dash is what matters. Amen. All right. The dash in between 1918 and 2019, the dash in between is what matters. You see, when you run your 101 yard dash, Grandma Nola, that's what matters. You see, some of us may run a 45 year dash. Some of us may run a 100-year dash. Some of us may run a 20-year dash, a 30-year dash, a 40-year, 50, 60, 70, but you're going to run a dash. And now, I'm about to get real with you. Don't let nobody fool you. You see, depending on what you do in between them two dates, as the pastor said, Determines your final destination, yeah. Yeah. your final resting place, yeah. your final home. Oh, yeah. Now don't let nobody fool you and tell you that it's all on this side. Yeah. Because you better be storing up treasures for the other side. Yeah. And you don't store up treasures for the other side by getting a good job and having a big house and having a big car and a big bank account. You store up treasures on the other side. By living right, by living holy, by living according to the word of God. You store up treasures on the other side by how you treat your neighbor. And if you can't treat your neighbor right, you sure as can't treat God right. Please ask the 12th chapter, which is my favorite book because I love Solomon, because I live like Solomon. I looked at the horizontal all my life, what was before me, and I finally decided to look to the vertical and found out that I couldn't live without God. So Ecclesiastes 12th chapter, the 13th verse to the 14th verse says, let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man because he will bring every work into judgment whether every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone who are all of us may receive the things that's done in this body according to the deeds that we have done while in the body no 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 now, I want to break that down for you because I want you to get an understanding. The Bible says, and all that didn't get an understanding. Yes, yes. You may think you're doing some things that your wife don't know about. Amen. You may think you're doing some things that your husband don't know about. Uh -huh. You may think you're doing some things that your parents don't know about. You may think you're doing some things that the police don't know about, that the government don't know about. But God sees everything, and he knows exactly what you're doing. But in the end, you have to hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Every one of us will appear before the judgment seat and stand and give an account for every deed that we did while we in the body. Now, Grandma Nola, I'm almost positively sure that she has stood before God and gave an account by the way she lived her life for 101 years. Now, you need to understand that the way that you live your life every day tells you whether you live in according to what God has required of you. Yeah. 
whether it be good or whether it be bad. You know where you're going before you get there. Because you know what road map you've been following. You know if you haven't been following the basic living, you know what they say about the Bible instructions before leaving. You know if you have not been following that map that God laid out, you just about know what your end destination will be. Come on, people. Let's dispel the myth and let's get it together. Let's get right before we get left. We got to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's appointed to us once to die. Yeah. And after that, the judgment. You're going to make that appointment. Yes, sir. You ain't going to be calling up, God, can I cancel this one on you? Can I do this one tomorrow? Can I not do this today? You're going to make that appointment. It is appointed to you once to die. And after that, the judgment. Yes. You say you, 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 you may not want to face it. It may be a hard pill to swallow. But if you are young, young people. If you old, old people, if you rich or you poor, if you black, if you white, or any other race, if you healthy or not so healthy, you will travel the same course as Grandma Nola. This is a fixed order for all mankind. God has designed it that way. You can't find no fountain of youth. You can't find no genie in a bottle. There's nothing you can do about death. If you live right, you can embrace it. And you'll understand what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you'll understand. This is a fixed order, a fixed divine order for all man and his kind. And I want to tell you something. All things wear out, some faster than the others. Grandma took 101 years. I'm 47, I feel like I'm wearing out already. So I don't know how she did it, but she told me one thing she did was she ate right and she prayed right. So I'm thinking that that's part of it. Since she's been around the world twice, and everybody's saying the same thing, very few people have changed. And I found it to be true because I was one of them people when she passed by me. I was still saying the same old thing. You see, Lots of things in this world is going to wear out. Your shoes going to wear out. You just keep on wearing them. They going to wear out. Keep driving that car, going wherever you want to go, change the oil on it all the time. It's going to wear out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the young people, if you keep abusing your bodies and putting things in them that will destroy them from the inside out, it will wear you out just a little bit faster than every other thing will. You can wear yourself out by hanging around the wrong people in the wrong places and doing the wrong things. It'll wear you out just a little bit faster. So to the man and to the woman and to the boy and to the girl that have an ear, let them hear. You might feel like you got all the time in the world and tomorrow belongs to you, but I've got a news flash. Tomorrow ain't promised to you. You ain't got up and put the sun in the sky and put the moon in the sky and caused the earth to turn on its axis. You didn't decorate the darkness with stars. The God Almighty who created all things done that. And you won't get tomorrow unless he decides to grant you tomorrow. So you need to understand today that you need to live your life in between that righteous, holy, which is acceptable unto God. You need to understand something, young folks, that Satan wants to kill you. You see, he don't want you to die. You see, because dying is when I'm finished. Like Grandma Nola, that's when I finished my purpose. When my course is done, that's what dying is, you see. But killing is when you've been taken and took out and finished before your time. Before you got a chance to complete what God has put you here for. You see, that's why the Bible says, thou shall not kill. It did not say thou shall not die. See, everybody's going to die. It said don't kill because we all will die. You can be deprived 
and you can deprive other people of life and deprive them of their purpose. You see, drugs, young folks, can deprive you of your purpose. It will wear you out. And some of the people that's full of youth up in here, up in here, it will wear you out too as well. If you start indulging, dibbling, and dabbling, it will wear you out as well. All right. yeah. make it plain. Make it plain. Drugs will deprive you of your purpose. Sexual immorality will deprive you. It'll wear you out. It'll wear you out. It'll deprive you of your purpose. Being disobedient to your mother and father will wear you out. It'll rob you of your purpose. Hanging with the wrong friends will wear you out. It'll deprive you of your purpose in this life and in the life to come. You see, we can't do anything about being born. We can't do anything about dying. But we can do this. We can take care of what's in between them two days. So I encourage you again to get yourself right before you get yourself left. You see, the writer of Ecclesiastes said something because he knew life was unpredictable. Now I'm about to help you. When you understand that life is unpredictable, when you quit just living it for the moment, when you quit just living it just because I can, because I'm going to have a good time, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, they got a saying. If you want to hear God laugh, tell him what your plans are. I'm about to help you. You run around thinking life is this and that and this and that and this and that. Well, the writer of Ecclesiastes knew that life was a very unpredictable predicament for mankind. So the writer... The preacher Solomon described it like this. Vanity. All is vanity. It just seemed to be useless to me. He said, but the actual word that he used to describe life in the Hebrew is a word called hevel. And hevel means smoke or vapor. And Life is like smoke. Yeah. It's like vapors. Yeah. It's mysterious. You see, it takes on one shape, and before you know it, poof, it done took on another. One day you young, and the next day you old. One day you can run, dive, jump, tuck, and roll, and the next day you on a walker. One day you can do this, and you can remember that, and the next day you can't remember nothing. Life is like heaven. It's like smoke. So just when you think you mastered it, and you think you got it all under control, and you got all the answers, and to my young folks, you just got on the earth yesterday, but you know everything because you go to the information highway called the internet, and they tell you everything you want to hear. But you better remember, that's the information highway. That is not knowledge because knowledge and wisdom comes from God. See, you can get a bunch of information and not know what to do with it. And all you got is a bunch of information. Well, my grandmother gave us wisdom. She gave us knowledge. And when we was able to apply it, see, I wasn't foolish after a while when I listened to Grandma. Grandma told me, baby, you can build a bridge, but you need wisdom to know where to build the bridge. Because if you ain't got wisdom, you're going to build that bridge over your backyard and start over them lakes and rivers and valleys that you need to cross in life. So you better know what to do with what somebody gives you. When somebody gives you golden nuggets of wisdom, take them, apply them, and use them. And use it. Solomon understood this and he said that life was like smoke, that it'll take on one shape. And when you think you got it figured out, he said, you'll find out you ain't figured out nothing. You say, just like smoke, light takes on them other shapes and, uh, against you and with you. And just like smoke, life looks solid. It looked like I'm standing on firm ground. My bank account is fine. Everything is good. My job is fine. I got it all going on. And all of a sudden, when you think you got a grip on it, when you think you wrap your hands around it, it slipped right through your fingers. Yeah. Yeah. But one day, one day, 
Just like our beloved sister Nola Mae Howard, my grandmother, God clears all the heaven. He clears all the smoke. And when all the smoke clears, you find out what you did in between those days is what grants you access to get past all that other stuff yeah. and to get into his presence. You find what grants you the right to the tree of life. So because of death, because of death, because of life, it seems so unfair when death intrudes and just come right in. You see, it's unfair that you can no longer to hear Grandma Lola's laughter. It's unfair that you can no longer hear, see Grandma Lola smile. It's unfair that you can no longer look into her eyes and say, I love you. It seems like it's unfair. It's unfair whenever you didn't get a chance to tell her how much you love her. Because now you can't do it. But I want to encourage you and if you sit next to a loved one right now, yes, Lord. look at them in their eyes. Yeah, Lord. Everybody turn and look at everybody. Come on, family. Everybody turn and look at everybody. Oh. Yeah. I don't care <laughs> if there's disagreements, friction. Whatever, keep on looking at them in their eyes. Keep on looking. I don't care if it's disagreements, frictions, or whatever. See, people don't know how to give, and they don't know how to forgive. You need to look at them, forgive them, and move on. You see, I encourage you to get close to one another. Because the time will come when that one that is not your friend or is your friend will be sitting in the same place as Grandma Noah. And that's either going to be you or them. But eventually we all will come to that same course. You see, so I want to encourage you to love one another this morning. I want to encourage you to hug one another. I want to encourage you to exchange phone numbers, begin to talk to each other, even if you ain't got nothing to talk about. Act like you got something to talk about because you family and you should love each other just like that. You got Facebook, you got Twitter, you got Kick, you got Poke, you got all that stuff. Start kicking, poking, and facing books with your family. Because I can believe this, if Nola was here, she'd be able to tell us what's on the other side. You see, unlike us, she no longer have to assume, no longer have to guess, no longer have to find some grand hypothesis about what's on the other side of the grave. You see, she would tell us, my eyes have seen what no other eyes have seen. My ears have heard what no other ears have heard. It has entered into my heart what has not entered into any other man's heart. I have behold the king. I have seen him in his glory. I have stood in front of his throne. Now I stand at the side of his throne. I'm able to worship him in spirit and in truth to the fullest because I stand with him. I see him as he is. She say, I see what God has in store for them that love him. She would say, in my father's house there are many mansions. I got a room and if it was not so, I would not have told you so. You see, I got a room and it's rent free. I don't have no water bills because I got the living water of Christ. I don't have a light bill because God lights my path. She say I don't need no food because he's my bread when I'm hungry. He's my manna from heaven. He's my water when I'm thirsty. He's my will in the middle of a will. He is my God. He's my creator. He's my redeemer. He's my everything. He's my king. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You see, neither do corruption inherit incorruption. But I want to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the dead in Christ shall rise. And this incorruption, this corruption 
shall take on incorruption. This mortal shall take on immortality. And then the question will be posed. Then you can ask the question when you stand before this. Then you can begin to question this. Then you can begin to wrestle with this. Then you can begin to tussle with this. You can begin to look at death and say, oh, death. Where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy hole? Ain't no grave gonna hold me down. Ain't no grave gonna keep my body in the ground. Ain't no death gonna stop me from seeing my king. You'll be able to say, death, where's your power? Where is your holding power? How come you can't keep me down? You can't keep me down because Jesus got up. Yeah. Bible says, blessed are they that die in the Lord. Henceforth, yes, yeah, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor. Yeah, and their works do follow them. You see, when I look out there and I see Grandma Noah the works, my mother is a work of Grandma Noah. My Aunt Beulah is the work of Grandma Nola. My Aunt, my cousin Joanne, my cousin Vincent Charles, my brother Donald, Eric Valley, they are examples of Sister Nola's work. They are examples of what Sister Nola did while she was in the body. What she did in between that and dash. You see, Nola is at rest. Her work and she has heard the Lord say, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to all that he has done while he was in the body. He told, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I'm the beginning, and I'm the end. I am the first, I am the last. Blessed are they that do my commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. My grandmother, I'm about to close. My grandmother has beheld the face of the king. My grandmother has seen what God looks like outside of what the Bible paints him to be, outside of what I might think him to be. She has seen the king. And if you want to see the king, you better understand what goes on in between that dash. When you wake up in the morning and you look up and you see the sun, you ought to be thanking God. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to drop down on your knees. And the only thing, the first thing should come out your mouth is, God, you've been good. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I magnify you. I make you big amongst all your people, God. You've been so wonderful to me. You've been so good to me. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. The Bible declares. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he redeemed out of the hand of the enemies. And gather them out of the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. We wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. We found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, my soul fainted within me. But then he came and he delivered me out of all my distresses and led me forth by the right way. His mercy endures forever. The only way we can get 101 years. The only way Weakening into the kingdom, the gates, and inherit eternal life. We got to live holy. Amen. Now, I know some of us in here, and I'm finna close. I know some of us in here got our own idea of what it means to make it. What all you got to do? I want to tell you that's your idea. And it might be a good idea, but it ain't God's idea. Because God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that everybody might have eternal life through his son. My grandmother used to tell me, son, I'm not a Christian, huh? Son, I'm not a Baptist, huh? She would say, I am one who Jesus came unto his own, and they received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them he gave power to become sons and daughters of God. She said, I'm a daughter of God. And if you want to be a daughter or a son of God, you got to come by the right way. You got to come by Jesus. There's no other way. No man can come to God. Islam won't take you to God. Christianity outside of Jesus Christ won't take you to God. Christian science won't take you to God. Pentecostal won't take you to God. Methodist won't take you to God. None of these things will take you to God. Jesus will take you to God. He is the only way for any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any child to make it. I want to encourage you when we walk away from him. Let's do better. Let's start acting like family. When I leave, I want everybody's phone number in him. I want everybody's name, everybody's number. And the reason is because we need to love one another. And I expect, I want everybody else to do the same. Even if it's a call every now and then. Call to see how one another doing. Because the day going to come that we all going to stand. We all going to be here, there, here with the same course of action. Because life is going to deliver to us. And when all the smoke clears, the hope is that you have lived by faith and not by sight. All right. The hope is that you have stood in the counsel of God and you have accepted and heard all that God had to say. Not the world, not your friends, not the television set, not all that other stuff, but you've heard what the word of God had to say. That it is the duty of man to keep his commandments and to fear him. Because that is the whole conclusion of the matter when it's all said and done. When it's all over, God won't ask you was you a good Baptist. He won't ask you was you a good Pentecostal. He won't ask you was you a good Methodist. He won't ask you was you a good Presbyterian. He won't ask you was you a good Catholic. He won't ask you was you a good this or good that. God will bring every work, whether it be good or whether it be bad, into judgment. And that earthly vessel, this coin that you call the body, will dissolve. Yes, sir. And when it dissolves, the smoke, the heaven, all be made clear. And everything that we did while we was in this body will give an account. My prayer is that your account overrun with the goodness of the Lord, with righteousness, with his grace, with his mercy, with his peace. My prayer is that every individual in here today would understand that we all need Jesus. Amen. That we all need to live holy Amen. and live right. Amen. And I believe that Grandma Nola set the best example that I've seen in 101 years. And that's my lifetime twice over. And then some. I believe if you want an example today, look at her life. Look at how she lived. Listen to the things that she said to you. Mm -hmm. Think about why she said it and apply it. Because it'll get you 101 years. Mm -hmm. It'll take you far. I want to see some people outdo them. Amen? Amen. Y'all come on, put your hands together for Jesus.